Hey there, everyone. Welcome to a brand new episode where I'm about to spill the beans on how to sell your house during a divorce. My name is Colette Smith with Love Las Vegas Realty, and I'm here today with Jimmy Day, a real estate expert in divorce sales. Jimmy has been in real estate for 45 years. He started as a broker at Century 21 Money World, moved on to Keller Williams, HomeSmart, and more. He is also a teacher and a trainer in Nevada with many realtors that are currently working in real estate also. So without further ado, let's get Jimmy and ask him some questions on how to sell your home during a divorce. My first question is about taxes, Jimmy. What are the tax issues regarding the sale of a marital home, including whether the home was purchased prior to the marriage or during the marriage? Well, Colette, let me say first, thanks for having me. And number two, you're diving right into the deep end, aren't you? <laughs> Taxes. The, the tax thing is people, uh, one of their big questions, and they don't understand how it works. While you're married, if you make a profit on your primary residence, if you live there two of the last five years, you can take 500000 in gain tax-free. Wow. If you're single, it's only two fifty. So are you married or single? Well, you're married when you bought the house. When you're divorced, is the divorce decree final before you get the house sold and closed, or did the divorce decree happen first? And this is a question a tax expert would answer for you. But if you're single, now you still get 250 and the profit's going to be split. So that's not the major impact. Part of the impact is if there's investment properties involved, those don't have that capital gains exclusion. Mm. Also, if someone stays in the house, who's making the payments on the house? Who gets the write-off? Because when you borrowed the money, when you bought the house, you're both legally required to make those payments. You both legally can take the tax write-off. And again, this is a question for your tax expert. Um, I'm not a tax expert. But taxes are a big deal. And the main one is if you're going to make a lot of money on the house, you should be unaffected whether you're divorced first or married because it's 500 for a married couple, 250 for a single person. Two of the last five years you have to live there as primary residence. That could bite somebody if it takes more than two years to sell a house, but not in this market. Yeah, we're in a good market right now. So um, before you were talking about buying somebody out, is what does that mean, buying somebody out? Well, when you... It's called a partition. When you live in a house together and you buy it together, either party can buy the other party out. And that might impact their loan because if the loan's taken out in both names, they might have a challenge assuming that obligation. But it's called operation of law. Because of the fact that they're doing this through a divorce, it's probably going to be okay for the person still in the house to continue to have the right off and make payments. But there's things that you have to look at. Um, so we can really go down that rabbit hole. But if one person stays in the house... They can buy the other person out. Okay. All right. So that's something to think about. So question number two, will fighting about the sale of the home cost you both time and money? In the divorce sales that I've been involved in, about 50% of the time it's actually a very acrimonious divorce. And sometimes it's actually fairly um, easy to do. People agree this is what's going to happen. Um, I, I won't tell you I'm an expert, but I am divorced. <laughs> and my divorce was very... Um, easy. She said, I want this. I said, okay, we're done in a day. Wow. But if they're watching this video, that's probably not the situation they're in. Right. So, um, again, we can sue for a partition. If one of the parties wants to definitely keep the house, the other party is going to have to force the sale, which the attorneys will walk you through how that works. But if they're fighting, if they can't agree on whether or not to sell the house, how are they ever going to agree on an offer? They're not. Right. Right. That's the acrimonious ones. And I've seen challenges with that. So, You've got to reach an agreement. The house is definitely going to be sold. In fact, when you call a real estate agent, if you are thinking about selling your house, they can't help you with that. If you're going to sell your house, then they can help you. What do you mean by that? That they Well, I mean, when somebody calls me and says, I'm thinking of selling my house. Well, do you really have to sell your house? Yes, I really have to sell my house. We're getting a divorce. Are you on the price of market value? And by you, I mean both of you. Are you both on the price of market value? Do you want me to handle the sale? Mm -hmm. So if they answer yes to all three of those, then we have an interview and we talk about it. But they both have to be on the same page. I have seen some divorces where one of the spouses does not want the house sold, and now we've got to get a court action forcing the sale. Well, it doesn't sound very fun. So my third question, which you kind of answered a little bit already, is should one spouse remain living in the house when you're trying to sell it? Does it make it harder to sell or easier to sell, or are they f fighting, locking the door? How does that work? Well, you're a real estate professional. When you go on a marketing consultation, you look at the house and decide, would this house be better off vacant, or is it better off kind of staged the way it is? Mm -hmm. So part of that's going to be you're going to ask the agent, would both of you be gone and have a vacant property? Vacant, lockbox, easiest to show, but not staged. 
But if she's so it might be okay if one of the spouses stays in the right. property, as long as they know they're going to have to pay something to stay in that house. It's not a free ride, because the other spouse, if it's a free ride, how motivated are they to take an offer? And that's a challenge we've seen. I'm not paying any rent. If we take this offer, now I've got to go find a rental or find another house to sell. I'm going to have house payments again. So if one of the spouses stays in the house, they need to either be paying the house payments or fair market rents, whatever the agreement is between the parties. They've got to pay something every month. And they might want to pay it through the attorneys. So somebody's going to have to say, did you make the payments? And no big surprises when it comes time to settle up. And it sounds like a little bit like the person that's staying there too. If they're going to have trepidation about um, selling the house, maybe we should start shopping for a house while the house is listed for that person that is living in the house. Everyone wants to know where I'm going to go from here. Right. So that's a, a major concern. The other thing in the in the divorce sales that I've handled, most of them, the wife is the one that stays in the house. And and typically they're concerned about security. There's so many camera systems out there. Um, I would definitely recommend if you don't have cameras in your house at this point, you might want to consider getting some type of a camera set up for the house because you're not going to be home uh, during all the showings. And if you insist on being present for the showings, that's going to cut down on the number of showings you get and the, and in the end, the more showings you get, the more money you get for your house. Money, money, money. Okay. So question number four for Jimmy Dig is, how can identifying your family's priorities, children, living parents, affect the sale of the home? That's a really good question, Colette, because if I have parents that live in, if we have one of those multi-gen houses, are we going to be able to go from that property to another multi-gen house? What if we sell the house and the parents have nowhere to go? Right. Now we're really stuck. The kids are typically going to go either with one or the other spouse or joint custody or something like that. So the kids are going to be, they're, they're something you have to work out. But I'm really concerned about living parents because we have a lot of that in, in Nevada. A lot of people retire here. Multi-gen housing is very popular. Am I going to get a multi-gen property for rent? As mm -hmm. you said, let's go look and let's see where we're going to go from here. Get, get a little advanced planning. Okay, great. And um, my fifth question is, how can couples pick a divorce specialist agent that both spouses can trust? This is a challenge when the husband has his agent and the wife has their agent and they're both fighting for their agent. Sometimes the courts will just say, we're not going to hire either one of those. Mm. So my recommendation is use the technology, get on a Zoom call with the husband and the wife. They don't have to even be in the same room. But get on a Zoom call and interview a couple agents on Zoom and find out which one is going to have the best marketing techniques. Because... Whoever has the best marketing, if they're a brand new agent, maybe a year in the business, but they have drone photography and all the social media channels, and they're going to get the best marketing done for you, or you've got a 20-year veteran that's got a database of 40,000 past clients or, or connections that they're going to work, you both need to be on the same page because whoever you hire is going to be working for both of you, and that agent that you hire is going to be working to get the highest possible price because we work on commission. There you go. So the agent makes money, and you make money. That's the way it works. So bottom line is you need to listen to the experts to avoid any pitfalls. And I want to thank you very much for watching today and give us a thumbs up if you learned something from video and hit the subscribe button for more great content from Colette Smith, your real estate expert, and Jimmy Digg, who's a Nevada real estate expert also. And we are helping your transition, not just your transaction. Thanks for watching. Thanks for having me, Colette.